So as our guest yesterday and former lawyer to Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Manny Montenegrino suggested, can we sue China? Can you sue a country? Now, I haven't practiced law in years, and I've never practiced international law of that sort. There's a lot of international law, actually, but it depends on treaties, immigration treaties, trade treaties, tax treaties. But it's countries agreeing to be bound by rules that they believe are in their own interest. And if there is a dispute, the countries agreed in advance to be bound by some sort of international judges, like trade dispute panels. The countries have to agree to accept a loss in those tribunals, otherwise what's the point? So sometimes the mighty United States itself would lose a trade dispute and would accept losing because they agreed in advance of the process and they signed the treaty and they believe that treaty in the process is fair enough. And if they stop feeling that way, they can get out of the treaty. But my point is international law depends on countries willingly submitting to outside decisions that might go against them because there's no international police force. There's no way of enforcing a ruling on a country that doesn't accept it. Just the other week, the so-called International Criminal Court announced they were going to investigate the United States for war crimes in Afghanistan. The obvious question is, yeah, you and what army? Because the International Criminal Court isn't a real thing. Here's a colorful map of the countries who have ratified the treaty that sets it up. Green are the countries that have ratified it. About 120 countries have ratified it, but you'll notice not the United States or Russia or China or India or Saudi Arabia, just to name a few countries. So my point is, yeah, good luck with that, guys. And that's my point. How could you even sue a foreign country? There's no global court. China already controls much of the United Nations, like the World Health Organization. China has a veto on the United Nations Security Council. How are you going to sue China? Where? Not in their own courts, of course. China's courts are not independent. They are agents of the Communist Party. Remember, those are the people who themselves participated in the doctor silencing. And then there's the concept, and I think it's generally a good one, of sovereign immunity. It's sort of like diplomatic immunity, but applies to whole countries. You can't just sue a country you don't like. We generally accept that we handle other countries through diplomacy, or God forbid, war, not in courtrooms. For some of the reasons I mentioned above, we can put sanctions on other countries, we can even do what Trump is so good at using the bully pulpit, using Twitter to, to push and cajole and morally punish uh, in a way other countries simply, you know, through his rhetoric. I think Trump does that very well. Don't deny that it works. So back to the big question today. Can we sue China? If they were a company, the answer would obviously be yes. At the very least, they were negligent with this virus. They were not careful enough. They did not live up to their duty of care as lawyers would say, they were willfully blind to the risks. They had an obligation to take reasonable precautions. They did not. But it's much more than just negligence. It was intentional. When you get into a car accident because of careless driving, because you were playing with the radio or something, you generally didn't take positive steps to crash into someone else. You were just foolish or, or careless. But China went beyond an accident when it deliberately covered up the virus and deliberately took steps to silence the conscientious doctors of Wuhan who were trying to ring the alarm, there were many good people in Wuhan trying to help, trying to stop the virus, trying to ask questions, to learn more, to help, to warn others. The Chinese government deliberately and actively shut them down. That wasn't an accident or carelessness like most car accidents. Using the car crash analogy, that, that's not dozing off at the wheel or even driving drunk. That's taking your car and deliberately ramming it into people to shut them up. The arrest of China literally, uh, the, the government of China literally arrested people who were trying to warn us. What if it were a private company that did that? Either negligently or willfully? Well, we have lots of precedents. Uh, one of them, a big one, is the 1998 Master Settlement Agreement with the cigarette companies. There had been a lot of individual lawsuits by states and the feds against cigarette companies for years. What did those companies know about the health effect? What, uh, what did they hide? What was important? What wasn't? Did, what did they cover up? Did they lie? In 1998, Bill Clinton and the U.S. states came to terms. A 25-year, $200 billion settlement. $200 billion. The companies weren't shut down. The payment is over time. Obviously, if it weren't, the companies wouldn't have been able to pay. They'd just have all gone bankrupt. So it's an extended period payment. The payment period, you could, you could call it a massive tax increase, I guess, because that's pretty much what it is. But it was, at least legally, compensation for past conduct about health. 
There were also agreements about not selling smokes to kids. But look, it's a fact. Since the 1960s, the Surgeon General had warned against smoking. No one alive in America or Canada doesn't know that smoking's bad for you. Everyone knows the risks and everyone chose to smoke anyways. But still, the companies made a huge settlement, $200 billion. That's a fifth of a trillion dollars. Now, smoking is a choice. It's not foisted on you. There are very few public places anymore where you encounter smoke if you don't want to. So it was all voluntarily. Anyone who got sick from smoking pretty much did so consensually. Just like anyone who gets fat from eating cheesecake or gets drunk from drinking liquor. You really weren't tricked or trapped or surprised. You really can't sue the fork makers that you used that fork for the cheesecake or the shot glass that you used to drink the liquor. Unlike the virus. There was no voluntariness there. There was no joint negligence, as a lawyer would say. We're not partially to blame for contracting this virus. They did this to us. They, the Chinese government, by covering it up, by lying, by letting their people travel around the world, by arresting the whistleblowers. And don't get me started if the virus itself was a Chinese creation, but we don't know that. But what we do know is surely enough. But what should we do about it? That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.